So we're going to solve several differential equations. Here's the first one, x squared double prime plus 5xy prime plus 3y equals 0. So this is the Cauchy-Euler differential equation. How, how do I know that? I can see that every term contains x raised to the power that matches the order of the derivative. So here I have the second derivative and then power is 2. Here I have the first derivative and then power is 1. Here I don't have a derivative, so power of x is 0. And that's why I don't see x at all. x to the power of 0 is 1. To obtain a general solution to the second order Cauchy-Euler differential equation, we need to start by solving a characteristic equation. It's also called auxiliary equation. And here's its form. A m squared plus b minus a m plus c equals zero. It's a quadratic equation. Um, now, what is a, b, and c? Those constants come from the original differential equation. And these are the constants I find in each term. a is the constant that comes from the coefficient of the second order term. So here, well, I can see it's 1, right? a equals 1. b is the constant that comes from this middle term coefficient, b equals 5. And then c is 3. Okay, so once I obtained a, b, and c, now I can write the actual equation here. So it's going to look like this. a is 1, right? So it's just m squared plus b minus a. b is 5, a is 1 times m plus c, c is 3 equals 0. So that's m squared plus 4m plus 3 equals 0. And now I have to solve this quadratic equation. If I can use factoring, that's great. If I cannot use factoring, then I'll just use quadratic formula. Now for this equation, we can totally use the factoring method. So m plus 1, right, times m plus 3. Let's check. 1 times 3 gives me 3. 1 plus 3 gives me 4, positive 4. Perfect. m equals 0. So from here, m plus 1 equals 0 m plus 3 equals 0, so m equals negative 1, m equals negative 3. So we obtained two solutions, and it's always going to be two solutions, but what kind of solutions? Well, they're distinct, meaning they're different, and they're real numbers. When we get two distinct real solutions, this is how the general solution to our differential equation is going to look like. So general solution. It's going to be y equals c1 times x to the power, and that's where I put first solution for characteristic equation, so power negative 1, plus c2x to the power, and then I'll use that second solution, negative 3. So that will be the general solution to the given differential equation. Now let's try to solve the following equation. x squared y double prime minus 3xy prime plus 4y equals 0. So we start by determining constants a, b, and c. Constant a equals 1 from here, from the first term. Constant b is negative 3. c equals 4. Now, using a, b, and c, I'm going to set up the characteristic equation. Its form is a m squared. So a is 1, meaning 1 m squared. I can just write m squared. Plus, the coefficient of the second term that involves m is b minus a. So I should put b minus a here. Negative 3 minus 1. That's, that's b minus a. And then plus c, plus 4, equals 0. So equation will be m squared minus 4m plus 4 equals 0. 
Now we have to solve this quadratic equation. We can either use factoring in this case, or maybe you can recognize that this is the perfect square trinomial, and you can take that approach. Well, if I just do basic factoring, then I'll have to use numbers negative 2 and negative 2. So negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Negative 2 plus negative 2 is negative 4. Okay, like that. And then we see here that we're going to end up with two same values. m equals 2, m equals 2. So that means that we got a repeated solution. That's where we say m1 equals m2 equals 2, right? So repeated real solution for this quadratic equation, characteristic equation. That means that the general solution to our differential equation will have the following form. So general, general solution, let's put it here. It's going to be y equals c1 times x raised to the power, well, m1 or m2, doesn't matter, they are the same, so that power, 2, plus c2 times x to the power 2 again, but then the second term, they can't be the same, right? Um, the second term has to be also multiplied by a ln of x. And this is how we write the general solution to the second order, cauchy order differential equation, when we obtain repeated real roots for a characteristic equation. Next, let's solve equation 2x squared y double prime plus x y prime plus y equals 0. Let's write down a, b, and c. a equals 2, b equals 1, c equals 1. These are all the constants from the differential equation. Now, let's write down the characteristic equation. a m squared a is 2, so I'll get 2m squared plus the coefficient here is b minus a, b minus a, 1 minus 2 plus c. So that's 2m squared minus m plus 1 equals 0. To solve this quadratic equation, let's use quadratic formula m equals negative b, so b is now, okay, so when I say a, b, and c, now I'm looking at uh, my quadratic equation, right? So these are new a, b, and c for quadratic formula, a, b, and c, right? Try not to get, not to get confused. So negative b from the formula is positive 1, plus or minus square root in the formula we put b squared so it's one negative one squared is just positive one minus four times a times c and then in the denominator it's two times a two times two so that's one plus or minus square root of one minus eight negative seven over four now, as I simplify, or as, as I apply that square root, I get 1 plus or minus i squared of 7 over 4. And since we're getting complex solutions, we want to put them in standard form. That's where we're separating a real part and an imaginary part. So, oh, you know, we separate it like that. Real part, and that's going to be imaginary part. 1 over 4 plus or minus i squared of 7 over 4. Now, when we get complex solutions for the characteristic equation, so these are complex conjugates to solutions, the general solution to our differential equation has the fo following form. General solution has the following, following form. That's y equals c1 times x to the power alpha times cosine of beta ln of x and then plus c2, same thing with sine now, now c2 times x to the power alpha sine 
beta ln of x. So to obtain this general solution for our equation, we need to know alpha and beta. Well, alpha and beta come from the, from the complex solutions here. So alpha is the real part. And then beta is the imaginary part. The imaginary part is always everything like next to i. This is beta, so don't include i itself. Um, square root of 7 over 4. Okay, so that's what we'll use here, and that's how I will write down the general solution. y equals c1x to the power 1 fourth cosine beta times ln of x. So let's, yeah, we'll just, I'll just put the number. Square root of 7 over 4 ln of x plus c2 x to the power one fourth sine square root of seven over four ln of x. So that's that's how the general solution is going to look like, and that's the answer.